Y'all remember Watch Dogs 1? Better yet, y'all remember the features in Watch Dogs 1? Hell, I don't even think Pepperidge Farm remembers <laughs> that. Alright y'all, what's up? It's your man's cash here. Today, I'm gonna take a look into what I think was the best feature in Watch Dogs 1. Was it the focus meter? No, but that is pretty close. What I think is the best feature in Watch Dogs 1 was the mini game. The thing that provided so much replayability to Watch Dogs 1. The story was good. The gameplay was decent at best. You know, the, the driving physics weren't that great. Did you know that the driving in this game was developed by a gay rattlesnake? The driving physics are like this pretty much. And the gunplay was pretty nice, but what kept a lot of people coming back were the mini games of Watch Dogs 1. So in this video, I want to take a look into each mini game, you know, see what each one was about. And at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about why aren't these mini games in the newer Watch Dogs? Because if you look at the newer Watch Dog games, they're just not there. Why? Why aren't they there? So let's get right into it. All right, so the first type of mini game that I want to talk about are the physical mini games, the ones that you have to run around the map to find. So let's start with chess. Now, chess, you can go around the map in certain cafes and other areas. You can find people who are playing chess and, you know, hop in and play with them. Now, the problem with chess in this game is that usually it's not going to be a full game. Instead, you're going to have to do some little challenge. I get a checkmate in three moves or something like that. And look, I'm not a grandmaster at chess, okay? I'm not that good at chess. So I'm not a big fan of this mini game. I'm going to be real with you. But the next mini game is poker. Now, the poker is pretty normal. It's your standard Texas Hold'em poker. But you can cheat. So usually when you go to a little poker den, you can play with them. And there is always, conveniently, a camera right behind the player so you can just hack into the camera and just zoom in on your opponent's hand. In fact, you can also see the opponent's stress level. I don't know if Aiden Pierce is a psychic, but you know, that's just a thing apparently. And so it makes poker in this game a piece of cake. No stress, nothing, easy money. But you know what, this next mini game that I'm about to tell you about is the easiest way to make money. In this game the cup game I don't know the real name for it I might put it up on screen I don't know but basically you find this dude on the street who's willing to give you I think $500 if you can guess where his ball is no not no no not those ones, guys come on come on guys so he'll put the ball in a cup and shuffle them and you're supposed to follow the ball so the first time it's incredibly easy to find where he put the ball and he doesn't even pull a single trick if you just have, you know, uh, some slight attention span, which I know it is hard. I know y'all are on TikTok. I know y'all's attention span is like two seconds unless Yeet is being blasted in the background. And you can just pick the cup. He pulls it out. It's the ball, obviously. Wow. Good job. Uh huh. So where's the ball? There. Damn, man, I'm trying to make a living here. And you get your $500. Now, the second time, he tries to pull a little sneaky. Where you see here, he kicks the ball into another cup. As if we don't see that. <laughs> Goofy ah, uh, bro. Like, ain't no way you thought that we weren't going to see that. This is $500 Bruh. on the line. You thought I wasn't going to pay attention? So he shuffles it again. And he's like, whoa, you got me. It's here. Oh, you saw it and the next levels are just the same thing but maybe a little bit faster so yeah if you're ever low on money and watch ducks one which is actually kind of impossible just go to this guy and get some free money easy i think that's all the physical type mini games game i think there might be a couple more that i just either don't remember or don't care about so yeah all right so let me talk about the part that i know you've been waiting for the digital trips. The digital trips in Watch Dogs 1 was probably one of the best features in the game. It allowed for so much replayability and the devs put so much work and time into them. Like each digital trip has its own skill tree. Even I wouldn't think about putting that in to these digital trips little mini games, but I gotta give it to the devs. They actually tried. Something that you don't see a lot these days. 
All right, so for the digital trips, let's start with madness. Madness was basically you run over people. Yeah. So you basically run over these people, and the more people you run over, the more points you get. And it's a simple gameplay loop while Damien is in the background taunting you. The aesthetic, the background, and the car you get, you know, it's all really cool. But there's not too much to this digital trip, so let's get to the next one, which is Psychedelic. This one also doesn't have too much into it. In fact, I'm not sure if this one even has a skill tree. Psychedelic might look nice, fun, childish, but in reality, this is the hardest digital trip out of all of them. This is what the CIA uses to torture inmates at Guantanamo Bay. This game is hard. It's dumb. The way you control Aiden is intuitive, annoying, and makes me want to jump off a building. But anyway, let me get to the next one, which is Spider Tank. That might not be the right title, but I'm gonna just call it that. This one was probably one of the best digital trips in this game, where you basically control a spider tank and you just destroy stuff. It's pretty fun and they give you an objective each level, like, oh, destroy these many cars, destroy a certain amount of police cars. And it's actually not that easy because the police are always there going to be shooting at you and eventually, if you don't get rid of those police, your tank will be destroyed and you will have a game over. This one also has a pretty good skill tree which is worth investing in. Right before I get to the last one which is going to be alone, I want to talk about the DLC digital trip which is Conspiracy. Conspiracy is it's a pretty fun mini game where you have to find the aliens within the populace and once you find them you gotta shoot a certain spot of their body to destroy them or otherwise they explode and you die. There's not there's not much to it. This one also has a skill tree because you know game developers back then kind of cared about you. But anyways, let's get to the last and probably the most impactful digital trip. Alone. Alone is a very unique minigame within the minigames universe within gaming itself because this one actually focuses on the story pretty well. When you're playing this minigame, you are, as the title says, alone in darkness. While you, Aiden, are hellbent in fixing that darkness. And fixing it just never ends. You're always trying to take away the darkness, always trying to fix things. While you hear Aiden's sister in the background resenting him for everything that he's done, all the stuff that he has dragged his sister into. He did this to us. It's his fault. Find him. It very much shows the mental state that Aiden is in while we're playing this game. Always having a nightmare about everything that he has done. Regret, sadness, despair, and loneliness. Dang, well that, that got a little deep now, didn't it? Now don't worry, this ain't the end of it. There are actually a couple other mini games that I want to get into so that don't really fit into the first two categories. So let's start with the AR shooter. I'm not, I don't remember the real name, okay? My memory is terrible. I have the memory span of an 80 year old grandma with dementia. So the AR shooter, it's like an app in your in-phone game. It just uses the environment around you to spawn in aliens and stuff like that and you have to you know shoot these aliens from where they spawn the more aliens that you shoot the more points that you will get if you don't shoot them in time these aliens will combine with each other and create bigger aliens which makes them easier to shoot actually i kind of like it when they do that but they do have more health but yeah that's pretty much it for the alien ar game all right so the next other mini game is Coin Rush, which is basically a parkour focused mini game where you go to a certain area and it starts the level. Basically, you run around a certain area of the map and you try to get coins. You know, the more coins you get, the more points you're gonna get. And you have to avoid these obstacle things. If you hit the obstacles, you lose points. There's a pretty, it's a pretty basic mini game. Which it is actually kind of fun. Now the problem with this minigame, in my opinion, is that just the controls for Watch Dogs 1 weren't that intuitive. Especially the parkour was not that great back then. So the game does become a little bit unfun. And also sometimes the paths just 
isn't clear and so you you end up getting stuck and looking stupid as you can see over here what i'm doing but yeah that, that's basically all the mini games in Watch Dogs 1 that i remember at least so now let's ask ourselves where are the mini games in the newer Watch Dogs? Well, I mean, there are some mini games in Watch Dogs 2 and Legion. Legion has darts, the boxing, and soccer thing. And Watch Dogs 2 has go karts, driver SF, and a couple other mini games I don't remember. And those were pretty good, but there's something missing. That is Digital Trip in the newer Watch Dogs game. For some reason, Digital Trips was only ever in the first Watch Dogs game and they never thought about bringing it back. Which raises the question, why aren't there Digital Trips in the newer Watch Dogs? Digital Trips allowed so much replayability for the game. A lot of people thought that the Watch Dogs 1 story was lackluster and cliche. And you're wrong, by the way. And <laughs> And a lot of people would come back to the game just to play Digital Trips. Everyone that I knew that played Watch Dogs 1 would come back to it just to play the Digital Trips again. Because the Digital Trips were like a game, a literal game inside a game, not a mini game. Each Digital Trip gave the player a whole new experience. And sometimes, as in the case of Alone, a little bit of a glimpse into our character's thoughts throughout the game. Digital Trips allowed so much more depth and replayability than the average GTA minigame. So another thing I wanted to wonder why this didn't happen is why isn't Coin Rush in Watch Dogs 2? Because in Watch Dogs 2, the gameplay and the parkour was vastly improved from Watch Dogs 1. So I'm just wondering why Ubisoft never thought about putting Coin Rush in Watch Dogs 2. Alright y'all, that's the end of the video. Um... Sorry, it's been a while since I've uploaded a video, you know, I've been busy, I've had no ideas, uh, I've been in school, and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying, I'm not a hobo. But yeah, it's been, a, it's been a while. Also, I've been playing Modern Warfare 2 a lot, which um, hinders my ability to get gameplay for other games. I've been grinding, bro, the game is kind of fun, I have to say. It's got some issues, but of course, that is for another video. But alright y'all, that's the end of the video. Be sure to hit the like button, be sure to hit the subscribe button, share this video with your friends, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.